Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about emotional connectedness or the E in the care model. Emotional connectedness is a byproduct of interaction. When you're interacting with a person, you are likely to feel an echo of their emotion. This is a form of empathy that is instinctive and with few exceptions, we all have the capacity to experience this instinctive empathy. The echo a parent feels of their child's emotion plays an important role in supporting emotional development, including the child's emotional awareness, their own and the emotions of others, the child's capacity to regulate their emotions, and the child's capacity to regulate their emotions in consideration of others. Emotional connectedness is important. Co-regulation refers to a form of emotional connectedness whereby you express in your tone of voice, facial expressions, and gestures, your echo of an emotion that is congruent with that of the child or young person with whom you are interacting, and then return to calm. Co-regulation is instrumental in supporting children to develop the capacity to self-regulate during their formative years as they follow the adult back to calm via the established emotional connection. As the child returns to calm, we feel calmer too, hence the term co-regulation. Emotional connectedness and co-regulation support experiences for children and young people that their experience is important, that their caregiver is accessible to them, that their caregiver understands them and that their caregiver can be relied upon as a source of comfort and restoration of feelings of well-being. Emotional connectedness and co-regulation are reassuring. Emotional connectedness supports optimistic beliefs about self, other and world and trust that others can be relied upon to understand and respond to your experience. These are particularly important outcomes in these times of uncertainty, restriction and confinement. Children and young people who are recovering from a tough start to life have not experienced emotional connectedness and co-regulation often enough or consistently enough. Consequently, they can struggle with expressing and regulating their emotions with acknowledging the experience of others and with regulating their own emotions in consideration of the experience of others. In these tough times, they will need a little extra emotional connectedness to help them to regulate their emotions. A little extra emotional connectedness will help them to feel heard and understood at an emotional level, thereby supporting lower arousal levels and anxiety proneness, approaching life and relationships under the influence of optimistic ideas and beliefs about self others and world, and trust in the accessibility and responsiveness of adults who meet their needs. In offering a little extra emotional connectedness, it is important to first reflect on what emotions the children and young people in your care experience in a typical day, and your own emotions across a typical day. When you record this, I anticipate that you will notice something important. Next, I would have you record some activities that the children and young people in your care engage in and the emotions those activities evoke for them. This can include positive emotions, such as occurs over play or when watching favorite TV shows, or it might be something like the frustration they feel, and you too, when they are struggling with some aspect of schoolwork they are completing at home. The strategy here is to engage with the children and young people in your care over at least one activity and allow yourself to feel and express a congruent, that is, matched emotion. They will feel connected to you at these times. Then return to calm. In many, if not most cases, they will return to calm with you. When emotionally connecting intentionally with children and young people who are recovering from a tough start to life, and particularly in consideration of confinement and the triggering effect of closeness, it is important to be aware of the dose. Too much can heighten the child or young person's emotions. Rather, match their level or, in the case of anxiety, anger and distress, briefly express a toned down version of the emotion thus allowing an emotional connection to be made before returning to calm. Play and other activities done with children and young people support emotional connection. 
As referred to earlier, emotional connectedness is a byproduct of interaction. So play with the children and young people in your care. Allow yourself to feel what they feel and regularly return to calm. In doing so, you are supporting them to experience emotions as part of the richness of life and not something to be avoided due to their potential to overwhelm. You're also supporting smaller emotions more generally and their capacity to regulate themselves. Finally, it's important to keep track of evidence that the plan is working. I've included on the infographic some of the signs you might expect to see that the children and young people in your care are benefiting from a little extra emotional connectedness. Again, for a more comprehensive list of the signs that children and young people in your home are benefiting from a little extra care, I would refer you to Appendix A at the back of the handbook that accompanies this video series.